Let's talk about Snell's Law of Refraction. So this is uh, Statement 4.52 from the IB Syllabus. We're asked to both state and then apply Snell's Law. And if you look in the IB Data Booklet, this is the equation. This is the way that Snell's Law is written in the IB Data Booklet. So we'll come back to that. Let's start off with the what's called the, the relative index of refraction. It's simply equal to, we usually use an N, and if we're going from a first medium into a second medium, it's just the ratio of the speeds, the speed in the first medium compared to the speed in the second medium. So, for instance, here we've got some light that's going from air, where the speed is 3 times 10 to the 8th, into water, where the speed is 2.25 times 10 to the 8th. So our relative index of refraction for those two mediums in that order would be equal to 3.00 times 10 to the 8th meters per second divided by 2.25 times 10 to the 8th meters per second, and that works out to be 1.33. So we get an index of refraction when you go from air into water of 1.33. So let's say we conduct a little experiment and we're going to set the angle of incidence to these values 0, 25, 50, and 60 degrees. Here's our angle of incidence and then we're setting that, that to various values such as 25 degrees and then we're measuring this angle of refraction here. So if we did that, these are the values of the angle of refraction that we would get for that situation where we're going from air into water. Now you can see here that when we double the angle of incidence from 25 to 50, the angle of refraction does not quite double. It doesn't become 39 degrees. And that means we don't have a proportional relationship. We've got something that's a little bit different and in fact, if we were to do a, if we were now to calculate the sine of these angles of incidence here, we would find that, of course, the sine of 0 is 0, sine of 25 is 0 0.423, sine of 50 is 0 0.766, and the sine of 60 is 0.866. And then we did the same thing for the angles of refraction here coming down we would get values sine of 0 is 0, sine of 18.5, sine of 35.1, and sine of 40.6. Now, if we do something kind of interesting here and we say, well, what is the ratio of sine i over sine r? That is, let's take the value in this column and divide it by the value in this column. And what I find is that every time it comes out to be 1.33, which is exactly equal to our relative index of refraction. That value is equal to n from the first medium to the second medium. And that means we've got some equivalent ratios. We know, for instance, that sine i divided by sine r is equal to V1 all over V2, which by definition is this index of refraction in going from medium 1 to medium 2. We can also say that uh, we know from the universal wave equation that V is equal to F times lambda. So in our first medium, we could write V1 equals F1 times lambda 1. And in the second medium, we could write that V2 equals F2 times lambda 2, but we know that F1 equals F2 because both of those are simply determined by the source. They're going to be the same frequency. So if I do a little bit of division here and divide those two, the F1s are going to cancel out. And that means the ratio of V1 to V2 is equal to lambda 1 over lambda 2. So we could also say that this is all equal to lambda 1 all over lambda 2. And we're going to take this one step farther, but first we have to define what we call a materials index of refraction. Okay, so we've been talking about this relative index of refraction, which is 
simply the ratio of the speeds in going from the first medium to the second medium. Now we want to talk about, and that, and that can be from any first medium to any second medium, and it could be any type of wave. It could be a water wave, it could be a sound wave, it doesn't have to be a light wave. Uh, this materials index of refraction, it's only defined for light waves. And what we do in, that, in this situation is we always take the case that light has to be traveling from air. Well, really from a vacuum, but the speed of light in a vacuum is to three significant digits, the same as the speed of light in air. So I usually just pretend it's air. So we're going from air into some other material. And of course, we would get some bending of the light ray. Our end material will be equal to the relative index when you go from air into that material. So it's going to be equal to the speed of light in air or vacuum, which we usually denote by the letter C, so that the speed of light in a vacuum is 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. Divide that by the speed in that material. So this end material, this index of refraction of material, which will help us to identify whether that material is glass or water, etc., um, will always be greater than 1, because the speed in any material is always less than the speed of light in a vacuum. Okay, so let's come back. We had said that there were these equivalent ratios, and we had gotten to this stage here. Now we can say something more. I know that 1 and 2 is going to equal v1 all over v2. And I know that n1 has got to equal c over v1, and n2 is going to equal c over v2. So now if I go and take n2 and divide by n1, I'm going to get c over v2 divided by c over v1. I'll invert and multiply. C's will cancel out, and I get v1 over v2, which is one of my original ratios. So that I can now write all of these equivalent ratios, sine i all over sine r is equal to 1 and 2 equals v1 over v2 equals lambda 1 over lambda 2. And then the one with the indexes, the subscripts inverted, will be the materials index of refraction, n2 over n1. And that, those sets of equivalent ratios, they're Snell's Law. The way the IB is going to write it is like this. So they're using a theta 2 where I would write the angle of refraction. And a theta 1 would be my angle of incidence. Okay, so I've got a few problems. Uh, it's a good idea to read the problems over, try them yourselves, and then come back for the answer. So in the first question here, we've got a known ratio of speeds, v1 and v2. And we're also dealing with angles, so we can write v1 over v2 has to equal sine i all over sine r. My speed ratio was 3 to 2. I knew my angle of incidence was 30 degrees, and I want to find out my angle of refraction. So I'm going to get that sine r is equal to 2 thirds of sine of 30 degrees, and that will give me that r is equal to the inverse sine of one-third, and then as a final answer you should get 19.5 degrees. Okay, a second question. Once again, I recommend that you read the question over, try it yourself, and then come back for the answer. Okay, so we're looking for the uh, index of refraction if light passes from glass into water where the speed is 2.3 times 10 to the eighth. So this is a relative index of refraction. We're really going from glass to water. That's just the ratio of the speeds in glass as compared to the speed in water. And in glass, we got a value of 2 times 10 to the 8th 
meters per second. In water, it was 2.3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. When you divide 2 by 2.3, you get an in, a relative index of refraction of 0 0.87. So notice that a relative index of refraction does not have to be greater than 1. In fact, it's always going to be less than 1 if you're going from slow into fast. Third question, once again, I recommend that you read the question over and then try it and then come back for the answer. So in this case, we're going from air into glass. So that is the situation that you need for a absolute index of refraction, a materials index of refraction. So we can write that sine i all over sine r must be equal to, say, v air divided by v glass. But this is defined as the materials index. So that would be n of glass. So we've really got that sine of 20 degrees all over the sine of r is equal to 1.5. That means r will equal the inverse sine of sine 20 divided by 1.5. And that should give you an angle of refraction of 13.2 degrees. And one last example. Read it over, try it, come back for the answer. OK, so in this question, we're going from water into air. And the light ray comes in. And it would refract. In this case, it's speeding up. So it would bend away from the normal, go kind of like that. But there is an angle of incidence such that the angle of refraction here would be 90 degrees. In other words, it would try to run right along the border. Well, let's try to solve for that. We'll have that sine i divided by the sine of 90 degrees. Of course, the sine of 90 degrees is equal to 1. will be equal to n2 over n1, where the second medium is the air. Uh, which has an index refraction of 1. The index refraction of the first medium water is 1.33. So we get that uh, I will be equal to the inverse sine of 1 over 1.33. And we get an angle there of 49 degrees. So if we come in here at 49 degrees, the light would try to run along the border. Turns out it can't do that, and you get a, something called total internal reflection. In other words, the light will stay within the water. And it's called total internal reflection. And in fact, if you're anywhere greater than 49 degrees, so if your angle of incidence is greater than or equal to 49 degrees, then you'll get total internal reflection. And this is this angle 49 degrees, you'll get total internal reflection. And this angle here is called the critical angle for water. If you've ever put on a, uh, a snorkeling mask and went under water in a pool and waited for the, the surface to calm down and then looked up, it's a really cool phenomenon. What you'll see is the entire panorama. So if you look up in a cone, if you look up in a cone, here's your mask, and you look up, you'll see the entire 180-degree panorama in a cone here of only 2 times 49 degrees, or 98 degrees. So you'll see a 180-degree panorama above the surface in a small cone of 98 degrees. And then if you look at 50 degrees, you would actually see a reflection. You'd get total internal reflection. So light from this starfish would totally internally reflect here and come back to your eyes. So this would be total internal reflection. And that's all for today, folks. Thank you very much.